Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. A friend of mine, Eric Knowles, recently asked if there was an easy way to hold up or store your panel saws. I've got one that I used. I'm going to show it to you and also going to show you how to build it. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe. Turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. Before power tools literally took over all sawing operations, a woodworker would have multiple hand saws, six, maybe as many as 12, for different operations. And they would store these in a case or a box called a saw till. Well, most hybrid woodworkers today, that's woodworkers that are using both hand tools and power tools, need one or two. I think you need at least two, a cross cut and a rip. And you want to have some way to conveniently store them other than just hanging them on a nail. So I have a traveling tool cabinet that I'm going to show you. And I put in a couple of very nifty little ways of holding my two saws in place. It's easy, it's quick, and that's what I'm going to walk you through. This is my traveling tool cabinet that also doubles as my tool cabinet in our classroom when we teach. And I so you have a toggle that you just turn sideways like that, lift it out, pull it out. I made a, put a strip down here so that the tip of the saw would actually fit down in there so that it wouldn't flop around. That goes in, turn the toggle and it holds it securely and that bottom isn't flopping about. So pretty simple. Let's go back in my shop and build one of these. Now, even though the saws made by the same manufacturer, don't expect this hole to be the same on both. I'm looking at it and I can tell that it isn't. So if you want it to fit well, then I would suggest that you make a specific holder for each saw and not try to do two of the same one. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on this one. Now, first thing we wanna make sure is that we get the thickness right, because in order for that to lay in there and you'd be able to turn the toggle, it's going to have to be at least as thick as the handle, maybe just a little bit more. So it's a tough thing to try to measure with a measuring tape. So I'm going to use a set of calipers. Now that measures just under seven eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to go uh, seven eighths strong. And then which way do we want the grain to run? It's going to hang like this. So it really doesn't matter. There's no stress on it. Um, and it would be easier to get a piece of the grain running this way well, actually, that may not be the case if I measure from here down to there. It's almost going to have to come out of a square piece. So we're going to start with something that is at least three and a quarter, three and a quarter long. And inch and three quarter will be enough. And then we've got a we've got to actually draw that shape and it's going to be a little bit tough because this is rounded over so it's not like you can just simply put your pencil down in there it's going to be hard to follow that may do a little bit of shaping to get it just right so this was the end of a walnut board that was 10 inches wide had a big old bark inclusion in there so it wasn't going to be used useful for just about anything but i can get what i need right off of there so i'm going to take that over to the bandsaw and rip it right about here Okay, now the best way <coughs> to copy that shape, not really worried about seasonal expansion, the pieces are too small. May as well use as much of this as we can. We can actually get a couple of them out of it. Now, I don't want that to move. I think the easiest way is going to go in and shape a pencil so that the, the, uh, the lid is in line with that face. Okay. Now I'm going to get some yellow. I 
This is uh, automotive refinished masking tape. Now we want to try to keep that standing up plumb. I think I can get into I can get into that tight of a radius anyway, but just in case you can't, cut make a couple of relief cuts like that so when you get to it that'll uh, free up your blade. Now, If your blade is really sharp, you can use it to go in there and trim that up. All right. Now I want that looking a little bit better than that. Got some burns on there from the blade and that doesn't quite fit. So we can go over, we can use a disc sander, we could actually just use a rasp. The inside we're going to have to use, we can use a round rasp there as well or we can use a, a, a drum sander. I have both. Um, I'll do half and half. So let's do, start that first one off. I'm going to use what's called a rat tail rasp. Actually, we'll do so this is a round rasp. It's tapered from here to the tip. It's quite aggressive as you can see. This is actually a number, a number nine. So it goes from uh, a one up to a 15. The higher the number, the finer it is. So this is fairly aggressive for working on this, but in there with a uh, with a cabinet makers or model makers is actually what this is called so you flat on one side round on the other I could have used that as the first one nice thing about this is you can flip it over to do the outside with the flat part hey if you like this video we have more our monthly newsletter has subscriber only content discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. Okay, we'll go over and do that side on an oscillating spindle sander, show you how easy that is. It's called an oscillating spindle sander. It's not that expensive. So this moves up and down at the same time that it spins. It's got really good dust collection. And I've got a sleeve on here that is 120 grit. He is always a light touch. I'm going to get rid of that burn. Okay, that fits. Now we need to fit it in terms of of. Uh, snug so that when it when it goes in there and the toggle goes on it doesn't move in and out first thing i want to do is use my shooting board just to clean up one side just get rid of 
as a residue from the glue. Actually, I think I can get a better finish going this way. Okay, now we need to put a, a toggle. And so we're about two and a, yeah, we can go two and a half inches. I'm gonna use a piece of maple for that. I want it nice and tough. Actually have some right here. And that'll work out just perfect. So we'll mark that two and a quarter. Just snap that off with my bench hook and We can use the small shooting board on or with wrong direction. Cleaned up a little bit more, get past that torn pit. Went a little bit too far on this one, so we'll just shorten it a bit. Just a little touch like that. Maybe a little bit on this one. All right, that looks good. Okay, first hole in this piece needs to be the width of the, the uh, threads. So eighth inch. center hole to start with. And I'll just thread that through and then let it spin a little bit at the end. I don't mind having a little bit of friction there. That's good. Now we want to make sure that when we install this, that in the closed position it doesn't interfere, meaning it doesn't go up beyond the edges. And we'll do our best to center it. Right about there. Change this out and give us a pilot hole. It's a brass screw, so you always want to be careful. It's easy to twist them off. In fact, I'll go in with a steel screw first and cut the threads. Okay, so there's a steel thread, a steel screw, same size, same thread. It's always better to go in and cut the thread with that first, far less likely to break. that won't come off. Now as I was saying I wouldn't have any problem just gluing that on the wall but same time you don't want your saw falling off. So I'm going to secure it with a couple of screws and we'll get that we'll countersink for those right now. Okay I'm going to use two brass screws on this. One 
that to be the same length, which it is. And we'll put them one right there. And one right there. Can't hide them, we may as well accentuate them. That's why I'm using brass. do its thing. I wonder if we put it like, no, we can't without having to move something else. So we'll sit it right there. I don't have a matching steel screw, so I've got to use the brass one. It's a little bit bigger. Hopefully it'll survive, but that's too tight. I've got to go in and uh, drill through that piece of walnut or else this will never pull tight against the wall. Okay, I'm just going to drill. You have to have a larger hole in the first piece so that the screw can pull the piece tight to the second piece. Not everybody realizes that, I've come to find out. Now, I wouldn't have, uh, I would have put a bit of glue on there if this was going to be permanent. Eric, there you go. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.